Hey friends, welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. Today is Friday, April 21, 2023. The sun and moon are in Taurus and it feels a little bit like I made it through the wilderness, right? Because uh, this last week has been <laughs> a bumpy ride and a bit of a bummer for a lot of people. Venus was uh, square to Saturn for a minute there, and we saw a bunch of breakups and transitions in relationships. Um, I saw more than one or two <laughs> relationships in transition uh, this this past Venus square Saturn, and then you know we followed that up with a with a. a a second new moon in Aries. We call that a black moon. It only happens once every 29 months. A second new moon in Aries, followed directly by a solar eclipse in Aries. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that eclipse in the Latin does mean to leave. So uh, we're, uh, you know, we're talking about beginnings and endings here. And we've really been through it lately, just uh, uh, noticing some transitions that maybe we did see coming, some of them that we didn't see coming or that we were trying to resist have come along, right? Uh, but here we are, sun is in Taurus, moon is in Taurus, we can begin to get grounded again, okay? We can come back into the moment and, uh, you know, take all those things that we started in the past few days and actually like in the past 30 days or so. Uh, and, you know, all those, all those fi all that fiery initiative we've taken, all those fresh starts that we've made or those fresh endings that we made, which also represent fresh starts. And now we get to stop rushing ahead with it and, you know, stop, um, stop worrying so much about it and just sort of uh, slow down and follow through <laughs> on, on what we began. And that's a real relief. Okay. So it's Friday. It's ruled by Venus. Taurus is ruled by Venus. This is a time to think about, you know, your physical environment uh, your personal values, the work that you do, sort of your routine life and, you know, your money and your security, your, your sense of security, uh, your, uh, your, your desire to feel supported and like you have everything that you, uh, that you need. So, uh, the, with the, with the change over to sun in Taurus from sun in Aries, uh, we also get a new card on the side of the page. This is the, the Five of Pentacles, and it's here because it corresponds in astrology with the first 10 days or the first decan of the sun's transit here in the land of Taurus. So Taurus is an earth sign. Pentacles in Tarot represent earth element symbolism. Earth element symbolism is about our physical resources, what it is that we possess, um, and also sort of in terms of what kind of work we're willing to do, what kind of investment or expenditure we're willing to make to uh, create a sense of security for ourselves. And if you're looking at this picture, you see that this doesn't look like a good sense of security <laughs> for maybe a couple of people here, right? So you have one person who appears to be walking without shoes and another person sort of walking on crutches. And behind them, there's this building with this really ornate, um, you know, colored glass window. Okay. So, uh, there is a sense of security and structure here, but these people are on the outside and they are in the cold. So there is an out in the cold kind of vibe to this. And, you know, that, you know, in terms of our physical resources that can say that, you know, we are going without something that, uh, that we need. Okay. We can say that somebody is, uh, going out, going without either something that they need or something that, you know, that they uh, are accustomed to having. Uh, one might be in a position where they need to ask for help. They need to find assistance with what it is they're trying to do. For example, if you recently <laughs> uh, went through a breakup, you may need, you may be hiring a lawyer right now, right? You need to turn to some somebody who has the who has the capacity to uh, to help you get what you need from the situation that you're in. Okay, so. If you are going without serious things that you that you absolutely need, please reach out for help. Okay, if you are going without food, if you're going without shoes, if you're going without you know uh, medical attention when you really need it, if you if you're going without uh, uh, you know electricity in your house, that kind of thing, it's really time to step out, step up, and ask somebody. Whether that is you know. I mean, around here in Arkansas, people mostly would ask a church, right? You go to a faith-based organization, they usually have a fund to help to help a person pay their electric, electrical bill one time or something like that. 
um, or go to a food bank and get the food that you need so that you don't have to go to the grocery store and you can use that money for something else. Okay. So when it comes to going without like actual necessities, please ask for help. And if you know somebody who's going without their necessities, please try to help them. <laughs> okay. If, if you are in a better position than this, then, you know, and you see somebody, you know, walking around with bare feet as an example, just as a, as an allegory, you know, I, one would hope that, that there would be about five people nearby scrambling to find that person some shoes. Right. And, you know, otherwise it, it, maybe we just feel out in the cold in terms of, you know, we're not staying in the same place that we were staying in or, or we're not, you know, enjoying the same relationship that we were enjoying that Venus square Saturn stuff really, um, really brought a, <laughs> really brought some finality and closure to some situations for some people that I know. So, uh, uh, you know, perhaps this is just a feeling of not having what it is that, that we wanted or what we're accustomed to having in terms of our sense of security in life. Right. Uh, and it, Taurus is very much about having, having that sense of security in life, having the money we need to get the stuff we need to feel like we are growing and thriving in the world. So, um, you know, if that's you, uh, you, you're probably not alone right now. Um, again, don't be afraid to reach out for help. And, you know, if you're in a situation where you really have everything you need, but things are just not the way you're accustomed to having them, and that's, you know, obviously going to hurt, it's going to bother you, it's going to be feel frustrating um, and, you know, uh, and foreign to you, uh, it, it's also appropriate to reach out to help. And by that, I mean, you know, get some guidance. If you need to talk to a therapist or a counselor, talk to a therapist or a counselor, okay? You know, if you have a trusted friend who will hear you out, let your trusted friend hear you out, you know, uh, allow yourself to lean on somebody a little bit at this time, because, uh, you know, these things are hard. And even if they don't look so hard, even if it's like, oh, well, I feel like I'm a really privileged person. So why am I whining about this thing that I'm going through? Um, you know, you can't compare your, you know, you can't compare your worst moment to somebody else's worst moment. Okay. You just have to uh, acknowledge when you are in a bad moment and, and, you know, share about it if you need to get something off of your chest. Okay. Even if you just need to vent, call up a friend and say, I got a vent. I'm so angry. I can't, I can't not say something, right? Uh, call up somebody who, who won't take offense to you venting. All right. And that, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn this card over. Oh, I got the King of Swords. Now, this is the Ethereal Visions Luna Edition uh, Tarot card. I love these pretty holographic cards. And this King of Swords Look at that. Uh, you know, to, to me, this King of Swords really represents wisdom, right? Um, it, you know, the sword is held in a way where, uh, you know, it's not... It, it's not as though this person intends to use a sword, <laughs> right? It's held held in this really relaxed way, almost sort of cradled uh, in in his arms, and it's it's like a it's like it's a more of a a symbol of his authority than it is you know a weapon that he uses, right? Uh, so you know the 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 swords in tarot are about the intellect. It's about the uh, the thoughts, plans, and communications, and the King of Swords. Uh, represents mastery of the thoughts, plans, and communications. It represents, you know, judicious use of the thoughts, plans, and communications. And that sword is the sword of truth. It's the sword of justice. And the sword of truth can cut both ways, right? We can use our words to help and we can use our words to, to do harm. And whether we're doing that, you know, in an honest way or a dishonest way, we have to acknowledge that sometimes our words help and sometimes our words do harm. Sometimes our plans help people and sometimes sometimes our plans do more harm than we set than we set out for them to do or as much harm as we set up, set out for them to do some people don't have the best intentions in you know in mind so but the king of swords is somebody who has developed a mastery of this uh, this uh, judicious use of the truth right uh, in the interest of being able to, of being able to help in the interest of being able to lead in the interest of being able to support and protect the people that rely on him. Because when you're a royalty, when you're the king, 
you know, this is, you know, this can refer to like a parental figure, uh, whether you are a parent or, or, you know, so, or there's a parent in your life who's like this, or just an authority figure. Uh, you know, when you are a king, you, you know, you're not, you, you just can't be about yourself. <laughs> uh, the stories of history are ripe with that, uh, with that idea, right? Uh, the king is a servant of the of the land and a ser servant of the people, and uh, I see that very much in this in this king. So uh, this is a person who, uh, you know, to me sits uh, probably a lot in meditation. This is a person uh, to me who really seeks to use their intellect in as judicious and um, you know helpful a way as possible. So there's the king. Of swords and it's appropriate that the king shows up and it's appropriate that this sort of green smoke the the of the, the sensor here is burning in the direction here of my mercury retrograde because mercury goes retrograde today at 3 35 a.m it's going to be three weeks of mercury retrograde um there are shakeups and plans and communications that come along with this we can have challenges with travel please be careful on the road especially Please, most especially in local travel, be careful on the road, all right? Give people plenty of room. Uh, you know, don't try to dash out in front of anybody. Don't, you know, this is not a time to try to rush ahead. Go at a reasonable pace. You know, be, really uh, be careful on the road. And also just be careful when you're dealing with people in life right now. We want to be careful to listen. Part of the thing that I noticed about Mercury Retrograde is that we think we're being very clear. We're communicating very well about what we think and what our plans are. But um, at least for me, and I found with other people too, I, I often find that I'm not listening. And I feel like pe people aren't hearing what I'm saying, but what I discover is Oh, they're not listening to me because I'm not listening to them, <laughs> right? So if you if you want people to listen to you, if you feel frustrated about that, then let that be a reminder that uh, that you have to to listen to your partners in life, uh, the people that you work with, the people that that you rely on and who rely on you, right? I have to listen carefully and and just be really clear. And Mercury is in retrograde. You know, often they say don't sign contracts. I don't say don't sign contracts or make commitments. I say read the fine print, make sure you understand the whole agreement before you sign on. Okay. You just have, want to make sure, uh, retrograde is about reflection and review. Okay. So we're making sure that the commitments we're making, um, you know, are really, are really what we, what we think they are. Okay. Uh, and there can be an element of illusion here. So don't be surprised if you're reading the fine print and you find something that you, you didn't know you were signing on for. Right. So then that's a time when we also have to negotiate the way forward. Um, so challenges with chat and travel, there can be some rigid or narrow thinking or outlook. You know, we might feel like, okay, if I just follow the rules, you know, if I just do work according to the plan, everything will work out great. Well, if this is a plan that you made four weeks ago, <laughs> and now here we are in Mercury retrograde, Mercury retrograde is giving you this opportunity to reflect and review in light of recent changes, <laughs> reflect and review your plans so that you can re-envision the way forward, right? So this is your opportunity to change your mind about where you're going and what you're trying to do, what your plan is to, to achieve your objectives. So let's not get too rigid or narrow about following the plan as it was. This is the time, if, if there is a time to, to rethink your plans, now is the time to be doing it. Um, and, you know, it is a good time to be organizing just, you know, your personal spaces, your personal creative spaces, uh, your work, social and civic spaces, uh, and also, you know, addressing your short term agendas rather than thinking too long term, just taking care of things that are, you know, coming up for you very quickly. So Mercury retrograde, it's not, uh, it's not, it, it is a challenge. It can be a challenge. Okay. But it's not like the bad, difficult, hard thing that people like to make it out to be. It just really requires some mastery. Okay. Of your communications. And that means being able to listen at least as much as you speak. Right. And that means, you know, being able to give consideration before you settle on a plan moving forward. Um, also, the King of Swords is going to help us out when it comes to the other energy that comes up today very strongly, Sun square to Pluto. So uh, this is how it went. We had the Sun in Aries and we had a new moon in Aries at the beginning uh, up, up here of Aries. And then we had the Sun in Aries for about 30 days. And then there was another new moon in Aries 
um, just a couple days ago. And the, that new moon in Aries was the second one in Aries, which is, it's called a black moon. And it's, uh, it was the second one. Uh, it, it happens like once every 29 years. Anyway, not 29 years, 29 months. I'm starting to babble, but I want to focus. Sun, uh, so we have that new moon in Aries that was followed directly by an eclipse in Aries. And just a few minutes later, that moon moved on into Taurus. Okay. Then the moon made a square with Pluto and then the sun moved on to Taurus. And now the sun is making a square with Pluto. Okay. So this is, uh, this is, you know, this is sort of the end of that transitional period. Hopefully we are, we are starting to come out of that, uh, and, and come into a more grounded space with ourselves being sun and moon and Taurus. Okay. But that sun square Pluto is the final sort of, uh, trickster <laughs> coming out to play with us for a few days in terms of, you know, uh, giving us a challenge in terms of like, what we have discovered, what has come up for us, what what new or revealing facts or understandings uh, are coming up for us now, especially in our work, social, and civic spheres with that moon square, Pluto, that sun square Pluto. Now the moon was square Pluto, so we also had some discoveries about our personal lives. We're we're rethinking our lives entirely at this point, right? We're we're in transition. We don't we don't necessarily know what the direction forward is going to be. It's a good. T it's actually a good time to be in Mercury retrograde so that we can sort of reassess. Uh, you know, our trajectory in light of these recent changes. And this is a transformational time. And really, uh, it can be a time when you personally, especially when it comes to your work, social and civic spaces, feel a lot more energy, you feel a lot more power, you feel a lot of a lot more motivation. Pluto powers us from within. So it's a subtle power, but it's a driving force, for, more like being pushed from behind, right? Um, uh, you know, a sense of initiative that is that is almost uh, the, uh, compulsory, right? Pluto has this capacity to come along and say, oh, this is not where I thought you would be. So I'm just going to pick you up and put you over here. So it can be really abrupt changes where it can just be like huge transitions that it's hard to take in all at once, right? Uh, we feel at this time perhaps a little bit of more of a need for recognition or uh, more of a need for influence, you know, like, oh, I want my, I want my raise, I want my, I want my recognition, I want my, uh, my promotion or whatever that is. And that can result in sort of domineering behavior, controlling behavior, trying to act like we're, we're on top or in charge, right? There can be some power struggles, again, work, social and civic life, okay? And, uh, you know, so we need to, we need to be less about our ego and more about, you know, considering the, the, considering the path forward, right? Considering what the plan is supposed to be, uh, with this also comes on the really flip side, um, you know, some increased fear, paranoia, jealousy, a tendency to try to manipulate situations, a sort of pushing from behind feeling that you get with Pluto. That's a, that's a manipulation, <laughs> right? Uh, if we, if, for example, allow somebody to think something is true and we know that it is not, uh, because it helps us achieve our aims, that is a manipulative measure, right? We should always be honest. You should tell the truth when it's helpful for other people, okay? Uh, we don't let people sort of live according to lies unless they insist on it, right? So just be aware that there can be some difficult uh, emotions and impulses and drives that come up with this sun square Pluto. It's just with us for a couple of days, three days maybe, um, and, and then we will move on from it. Okay. And, and if you feel that overwhelming desire to try to take com control of a situation, uh, if you feel an overwhelming desire to do something underhanded or manipulative, right? We want to just be really careful not to do that. To direct that energy, that power and motivation to the positive things that you're trying to do in your life. Direct that energy and power and motivation into, you know, like, okay, here's where we are now. And I know that we've been through a lot of changes recently. So what are we going to uh, do to tweak the plan going forward, you know, in that case? So, um, yes, King of Swords and the Five of Pentacles together here. This is, this is asking us to seek guidance, right? I said, you know, I, I did say, you know, if you need help, ask for it. If you need um, help for your emotional or mental well-being at this time, please ask for it. If you need help, especially getting your physical needs in life 
um, please ask for help because here's the thing, when you go without those things for even a little bit, it, it has a detriment on your long-term ability to thrive, okay? So don't go without running water, don't go without electricity or food because you know you think if I just push through for another couple of weeks, don't do that to yourself, right? It, it really has a long-term effect. Ask for help. And King of Swords, that would say, that would be, you know, go to somebody that, um, you know, that you think gives sage guidance. Give, go to somebody that you think has some wisdom and, you know, not necessarily, uh, this isn't necessarily the person who has the money to give you, okay? This is not necessarily the person who knows what, you know, uh, who, who can solve all of your problems. And don't go into that situation thinking that this person can solve all your problems, but you go to this person because, you know, they have wisdom, you know, they will hear you out, you know, that they will give you good guidance and that they, they won't treat you poorly, <laughs> you know, for, for coming along and asking, okay, go with respect. This is a king. All right. Be, be careful. Choose your words wisely. Mercury retrograde, sun square Pluto. Let's not have a power struggle. You know, if we're in a, if we're in a place of, uh, if we're in a place of, uh, detriment. We're in a place of, of going without the things that we need. It's not a time to struggle with authority figures. Okay, don't do that. Uh, but do turn to somebody who you think has the wisdom to tell you how to move forward um, and, and have what you need doing so. All right. I think that's all I have to say about it today, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Truly appreciate your presence here. Please like, subscribe to the channel. It helps me a lot. And I will catch you all in the next video.